Welcome everybody to our fifth lockdown webinar. My name is Chris Goldie from Gifted Philanthropy, a director of the company, and with me is my colleague Andrew Day, another director. Hi, uh, well, good to see you all. Uh, well, at least virtually. Um, it's surprising it's not long till Christmas. Um, I know that sounds frightening, even though we're in a very warm summer just at the moment. Indeed, indeed. So let's talk about Christmas appeals, which is what we're here to talk about. It may seem a bit odd, as Andrew says, it's midsummer. Christmas seems a long way off. But nevertheless, now is the time to start thinking about what you might do from a fundraising perspective at Christmas time. So we'll kick off maybe with a little quote from the uh, author of Peanuts, Charles M. Schultz, who said, Christmas is doing a little extra for someone. And I think that's quite a clear message for all of us when we think about what we might do philanthropically at Christmas time. Of course, Christmas appeals come in all shapes and sizes. We know that national newspapers run big Christmas campaigns for other charities. Very often they'll select two or three charities each year and look to raise a lot of money for those particular causes. National charities will very often run campaigns for themselves, but at more local level, parish churches, schools, theatres, community groups, they'll very often run Christmas appeals, not just for themselves, but very often for other causes as well. And a few examples from 2019, uh, the, the main national UK newspapers raised more than four and a half million pounds through their Christmas appeals last year. The Book Trust, on the other hand, 240,000 pounds, smashed previous records. We're very pleased with that, but a much smaller campaign in terms of volume. The Royal Marsden, the big cancer charity, charity hospital in London, 103,000, specifically through a Christmas appeal. Alzheimer's Research, 85,000. And then down at a much more provincial, regional level, the Theatre by the Lake up in, Lake, up in the Lake District, £22,544 for their outreach work the following year. So why do we make appeals at Christmas time? Well, we all know, and it's a bit of a cliche, but it is the season of goodwill. And it's a proven fact that 36% of the public will give to charity in the approach to Christmas. This is because donor motivation is usually very high. We recognise and very often that we're spending a lot of money on presents and food and alcohol. And maybe it's a touch of compensation here. You know, it's a time to give back to the community because we recognise that we are perhaps overspending on luxury items for our own families. But of course, it's also a time when we really appreciate that there are some people for whom Christmas is not um, the luxurious affair that it is for most of us. And perhaps it's, it's, it becomes a very appropriate time for us to think about giving support to those who genuinely need it most. It also reflects the true meaning of Christmas. Whether you're religious or not, and as we all remind our children time after time, Christmas is primarily a time to give and not receive. You know, when they get that Christmas present that they're not particularly happy about, it was always an opportunity to say, you know what, this is not about receiving all the time, this is about giving. And nothing could be more true in terms of people's motivation to give philanthropically. Christmas appeals also offer great opportunity for us to be creative, for us to be able to get people to, to to make gifts rather than just presents and gifts in a charitable sense means something that's considered something they've thought about something they've thought through just as you think about making a present what am i going to buy my wife well actually what am i going to give to charity and who do i want to support and the final point here which i think is really important is that you know a new year dawns just after christmas it's a time for great optimism we all look forward to the new year just as at the moment going through the recent COVID pandemic, maybe we're looking forward to what's going to happen when we return to some sort of normality. But in the case of Christmas appeals, it's a new year, a fresh start, time to introduce new initiatives, time to give charitably. Andrew, anything you want to add to that? No, I quite agree. Um, I think particularly this year, um, we, we need to re-examine what our traditional Christmas appeals have been in the past. This is, this is a unusual uh, reflective time. Many people are if you like, re-examining core values, uh, coming to terms again with the things that are really important in life and that they value the most. Um, and I think this Christmas, above many in recent years, will be an excellent opportunity to revisit and have a very effective Christmas appeal. I mean, as we've seen in the past here, Chris, these traditional Christmas appeals have ranged, just to remind everybody, you know, around charity Christmas cards. And by, by the way, that's the lion's share of the Christmas card market in Britain. There's people buying charity Christmas cards and they're in supporting their charities. Um, obviously, uh, it's around buying gifts for charities, paying for much needed items, um, at, at very specifically targeting, if you like, to, to fund a goat for Oxfam or a, you know, a, a meal for someone homeless at Christmas, that sort of thing. 
Um, and also there's enormous amounts of fundraising done uh, through carol services and other events. Um, Chris, I know uh, you, your, your cricket club, for example, has an excellent Christmas uh, celebration of singing carols in, at the clubhouse. And so it's not just the uh, uh, cathedrals that run or churches that run these carol services, it's right across the community. Again, this year, one wonders how that's going to happen. The direct mail or direct response uh, appeal is very common as well, and we're very familiar with that. And we'll be looking at some examples of uh, that sort of material in a moment. Um, more and more, we're seeing online giving campaigns, usually linked to a public relations program where there's a community awareness or a specific a call to action, if you like. Um, so getting people to respond immediately um, by text giving, um, you know, and we're seeing more and more these uh, credit card touch and givings uh, in shopping centers, for example. And then the, the fun things, I love these ones, are the theme days, whether it's Christmas jumper days or, you know, whatever. Um, they're always a bit of a giggle. Maybe, you know, in a Zoom context, that, that will take a very different uh, uh, approach this year. But anyway, they're the things that we've done in previous years, certainly so far as our Christmas appeals are concerned. Absolutely. And then what, you know, what is the impact then, Andrew? Well, the impact uh, of a Christmas appeal is that it's important, obviously, for raising money. Uh, and it usually, I should stress, is unrestricted funds. It's not focused on a capital project where you must spend it on that particular item. So um, it's, you know, it can offer headroom, if you like, financially for many charities and respond to immediate needs. It also, though, brings a community together, you know, shared giving and, and success with that in, in a full appeal context. Uh, can be very uh, uh, endorsing and strengthening for a community. And therein, it, it actually improves our fitness philanthropically. It strengthens our culture of fundraising and of giving. Uh, it's a way very often the corporates will support, uh, and it's an excellent opportunity to attract new donors. And therein, the trick there is not just about capturing uh, obviously financial support, but getting the data behind that support. So getting people's names and details and seeing them as, um, if you like, their first gift to your charity, maybe through the Christmas appeal. And that opens opportunities for you through the rest of the following year. Uh, and, and that's very much around building your donor network for the future. It's, it's also a moment when there can be great publicity, particularly if you're doing something fun or funky and a bit different, um, where even just locally, um, you know, that you shouldn't miss that, that uh, chance to raise the profile of your charity through your Christmas appeal. Absolutely. So I think it's very important when you think about your own Christmas appeal. And here we are in July. You may be thinking, what are we going to do at Christmas time? How can we use Christmas to, to generate income? So first thing, what do you hope? to gain most from your Christmas appeal? Is it money? And it could be, and don't be, if it is money, then that's great. But is it, as Andrew was just talking about, is it making sure you get new donors to your cause? Is it new volunteers? You know, do you need people to man food banks, soup kitchens, distribute clothing, distribute much needed goods? Is that actually a more important outcome for you? Ultimately, is your charity little known? Could this be the opportunity to take the next step in terms of publicity? It's probably a combination of all of them, but it will help you, I think, in your planning to really try and focus on what your priorities will be. What is it you're going to raise money for? If it's your own cause, what is the case of support? Andrew talked a moment ago about it's a great time to raise unrestricted funds, and of course it is, but your cause still needs to be a strong one. People still need to understand very simply what it is you need money for, what it is you're hoping to achieve through the fundraising. If on the other hand, you're raising money for a different cause, again, what will that cause be? You know, we know that a lot of parish churches, for example, will use Christmas as a time to raise money for good causes linked to their mission overseas, perhaps. For others, uh, businesses particularly, it might be around homelessness or education or disability causes. And part of that context is who is likely to be supporting you? What is it that you're hoping to achieve? Who's going to support you? Try and think about, in your planning of your Christmas appeal, those particular elements. What do you want to gain from it? What are you raising the money for? And who's going to support you? So having determined who's going to support you and how, what, you know, what your, your broad parameters of your appeal are going to be, you've got to start planning it now. It may be midsummer, but Christmas is only 20 weeks away, and you really that time is going to fly past. If you leave it too late, you'll be too late to launch. And the things you need to think about at the moment are which mechanisms you're going to use, who your target audience is, and who your partners might be. 
mechanisms can be anything from personal hand collections to online giving to phone apps to texting. There's a whole host of different mechanisms available to you, but you've got to be very clear in your own mind about who it is you're, you're likely to be getting support from. For example, if the majority of your supporters are the older generation, how comfortable are they with giving online or giving through apps? It may well be that you'll be better suited with a direct mail approach. If, on the other hand, they're younger, they're much more likely to just respond very quickly through a text giving campaign or an online giving campaign. The other key factor in, in your planning at this stage is who might your partners be? You know, corporate partners in the context of Christmas appeals are very exciting because they can very often help to supply either the goods or the distribution channels or the sponsorship of your appeal to make sure that all your costs are covered so you're able to say to your donors actually every penny raised is going to the good cause you know because wh smiths have paid for the running of the appeal these are all mechanisms that you've got to start planning now to get in place so that you can launch your appeal for the maximum impact now when should that be it shouldn't be too early. We mentioned a moment ago, you know, seeing Christmas in the shops in September is not something that most of us like, Christmas adverts on the TV. So don't go too early. Perhaps the start of November, just after half term, is a great time to do it. But equally, maybe there's a special date for your organisation. There's a landmark, there's an anniversary, there's, a, there's some reason for you to go perhaps a week earlier or a week later than the start of November. It's also time to think about just, you know, when do you factor in or what can you factor into your campaign to give it a boost? And actually Giving Tuesday, which this year is on the 1st of December, is a very useful mechanism, nationally recognised encouragement of people to give, a really useful mechanism for, for, for slotting into a Christmas appeal and giving it some oomph when you're halfway through. Mm. It can even be the hard launch. And what do we mean by soft launch and hard launch? Well, just as with a capital campaign, what you're looking to do at Christmas is get some early runs on the board, get some early money in the bank. So actually you can go out saying, we need to raise £20,000. We've already raised ten. So will you help us get to Christmas by getting another £10,000? That's your soft launch, is your closest supporters, is your potential partners. It's the work that's done leading up to your campaign launch. The hard launch is the big public splash about what it is you want to do, what you're going to achieve, what your target are. And if you've already raised some money towards that target, it's going to be much easier to raise, to raise the rest of it. Actually, Chris, just to be clear too, the mechanisms you're using will be different between those two types of launches. So your soft launch, it's about one-on-one -on -one personal engagement with your closest major donor or key donor supporters asking them to give you the leadership so that your main public appeal starts with that success factor that will give it momentum to go through and achieve its target within a relatively short space of time. You know, whether, you see this all the time with these, um, you know, national telethons and other things. A lot of the fundraising that's done is done in the year before that event happens. And, and, and obviously we get given the news during the evening and it builds up a momentum and that's what encourages on the night the public to respond. So this is a very similar uh, method or approach um, between the soft launch and the hard launch. Absolutely. As far as your Christmas cause is concerned, it's important your case is, it has some sense of urgency that it is compelling, that there is a specific focus to it around Christmas. It's not about just doing the same old thing. Um, and so it, 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 whilst it can be unrestricted in its funding, it's important that it has the capacity to reach people's hearts, that, that it encourages them to give now rather than not do it or give later. So it's really think carefully about how you're going to present your Christmas cause and, and write that case that is both urgent and compelling, prompting action now rather than later. A good way to do that is to focus on people and who will benefit. Uh, tell their story of the, what the giving will do. Um, and that motivates action for, amongst prospects as well, obviously. Um, you need to be very particular about how much money you actually need. I mean, don't be silly, uh, greedy, of course you won't. But, but it's important that people understand what, the, what, if you like, the investment that it is needed. Because when now you, you're moving the argument from where people's hearts are to the way they, they're thinking rationally, financially, about getting the outcome that their heart has, has already bought into. Um, or, I mean, if you need goods, it may be that there's a particular set of things or 
coats or other you know items for homeless people that you're looking for say that you know and make it as clear uh, exactly what what you're after here um it's crucial really to appeal to that festive spirit the the, the spirit of people coming to the end this year i think of a real a, a long period of reflection uh embracing hopefully a year of brighter prospects in 2021 uh, and wanting to respond positively to drawing it's t talked about as christmas spirit but you if you take my point it's a it's a sense of love you know agape in the sense of community love that they're wanting to express at this time of year and just make it easy for them to respond positively to actually support you don't make them fill in 55 different forms or go through six pages on your website to make the gift put it up front clear clean and easy to say yes we thought at this stage we just throw in a few examples of the sort of imagery that people have used previously for Christmas appeals. And we start with a couple that we like. Uh, the first for missing people is one of those sort of almost nightmare scenarios. But it's very, very important to what they are seeking to raise money for. You know, the, the image of a bike, a, a child's bike, still wrapped, all the other presents have gone, no Christmas tree in sight, but it's still there. Why is it still there? Because the child is missing. That's a horrible, horrible scenario, but it happens. And as the text says, every five minutes a child goes missing in the UK. And if you can imagine that happening as Christmas, that is incredibly emotional. And that's, that's a really strong message, we believe, that's very well demonstrated through a pretty simple photo and some fairly simple words. Yeah. The one from Birmingham Children's Hospital, the magical messages, is a different type of technique because what that's really doing is saying to people, don't send Christmas cards, use this little form, write a nice little message on our snowballs or our snowdrops and give us the money instead. It's, you can download it, it doesn't cost you anything to get it, you don't have to send it in the post, but it's a different way of dealing with the sociability of Christmas, saying hello to loved ones, but also getting the message across that you're making a, a, a donation to what is a very good cause, and children's hospitals clearly are very good causes. You can equally, if you don't want to do that, you just, well, you text five pounds or more. As a result, it's a very simple way of doing it, and it's all contained in what is not a too, too busy a, an advert, a too busy a poster. And I if, love that response, do more. You know, the text, text, do more. I just think, you know, you're, po you're reinforcing positively a positive action that you're asking your reader or recipient to take here. I think that was a really clever campaign. And in the missing people, on the same hope, you know, yeah, hope, exactly. the is missing, hope is, is what you, you cling on to, isn't it? So hope five, really, hope 10, hope, whatever. <laughs> really tapping in, really tapping into what people are feeling at that time and what you can do as a result of your gift. On the other hand, we've got one here, Toys for Kids Christmas Gift Appeal. It's, it's, I found this one quite difficult because the, none of the imagery is particularly emotional. It's all quite small. It's not very convincing. Yes, you know it's toys. You've got a few kids there. I think it'd be, it could be explained so much better. It doesn't inspire me. I don't think, Andrew, it inspires you either. It's sort of... Well, the, diff the difficulty is it doesn't speak to me emotionally first. Um, you know, I, in this case, it was a brilliant opportunity to actually show the face of a child receiving a gift. That's the most extraordinary expression normally, that excited, you know, and, and what it would mean, what you could do for just six pounds um, is give this sort of smile to a, to a child. Now, instead, we've got these, what I would describe as very functional photographs and messaging, uh, and it's quite confused. There's a lot going on here. I'm not clear as easily the mechanism for donating isn't as easy as text you know gift six pounds do you see what i mean it, it doesn't my response i've got to donate now you know what what how do i do that i mean what it's not as clear to me absolutely and i think that's that's so so we stuck that in as an example of maybe one that you know i'm sure it's been put together for all the right reasons it just doesn't quite work it obviously you know online you click the donate button you go through but it still is not as powerful as emotive as it needs to be at christmas the salvation army one on the other hand we both quite like because actually what it is it's very clear about what your money is going to achieve yeah and, you know, it's a mechanism used by a lot of charities throughout the year but at christmas it's particularly relevant because we're thinking about what we're spending in the broader context and therefore when you put into context that 28 pounds will support five lonely older people to enjoy a proper christmas lunch and friendship and you've just come back from tesco's and you spent 250 quid on your christmas shopping 
it, it's, it, you can sort of understand that that guilt complex, that that compensation motivation for giving, it kicks in. And if you see that, you're thinking, well, crikey, if I can't afford to give 28 quid for this, then what sort of person am I? And I, I like that. It's not the most exciting image. It's got a lot of writing on it, but it does. What, you, what are you drawn to all the time is the numbers and the values and what your support will actually look like. And it prompts you to think about different types of gifts. So, Chris, you could go to your wardrobe and get your party dress out and donate it, you know. Um, <laughs> but the point is, it does make you think, hang on, I've got these extra things. I really don't. How many coats do I need this winter? You know, well, actually, that, that through the Salvation Army, I could give them and I'd know they'd be needed and appreciated. It's, it's topical. It's timely. It's, it's responding to a specific need. So a few pictorial examples there of, of three good and one less good. Um, Digital marketing then becomes really important. You know, how you use your digital channels. We have talked earlier about the older generation not being as proficient with technology, but of course, more and more people, and I'm, I'm nearly 60, more and more people of my generation are using digital communications. Email is a regular part of daily life. Website is where you go to first. Twitter, some do, some don't, but for a lot of people, it's really important. Facebook, again, a great mechanism. Instagram, particularly for younger people, just ways of getting good imagery out. And at Christmas time, good imagery is really important. Why? Because what you're really trying to get across here and use is a headline that is punchy and appealing. You want to grab somebody's attention straight away. We talked a moment ago about the image that we didn't like. It didn't grab us. It didn't shake us up and go give. Emotive imagery, same reason. It wasn't saying to us, you give. As Andrew rightly said, a picture of a child with a beaming face, but clearly in hospital or in a, in a disadvantaged circumstance, opening a present, the, the wide-eyed wonder of a present would have been a far better image in our view for that. Can you afford a short video? You know, big national charities, of course, they will use videos and maybe even use national television to promote their campaigns. But even locally, if people come to your website, could you produce a video that goes on your website that is shared on YouTube and through other channels that actually explains what it is you do and why you need to raise money? And the final piece is really important to link directly to the giving page on your website. Andrew mentioned this before. You do not want to be going through layer after layer of web pages and information because you'll lose people. It has to be direct. And there are some really good programs available now to embed in your website that you can use to make it look like your donors and, and feel like it's your website, they're your donors, they're giving directly to you as a result. They're not going to go through a just giving or somebody else. And, and you can, that's a really good point, Chris. And I love the thought around the video because we've all got these, these phones these days, or someone has, and you know, those amateur videos sometimes are more powerful than the slick corporate polish jobs. And they're a great way to say thank you, even to an individual donor, by the way, is to take a video and share it on YouTube and say thank you to so-and-so. And, -so and um, it just builds a bit of a following. It makes it more immediate. You've got a faster levels of response. And in, in a public appeal, you've got to keep it fresh. You know, you can't just go with the same comms message that you started with at the beginning of the 10 weeks. You've got to keep introducing updates, saying thank you, letting people know where you are with your target and how, how you're going, you know, encouraging them to, to come on board and support. So I'd really encourage you to use your mobile phone and, and get those videos out. Absolutely. And, you know, if, if we've learned one thing from the last four months, it's that we can do so much more virtually and do it well. And I just think, just sitting here now, one is thinking of all sorts of ways for a health charity to engage with patients potentially, um, or nursing staff, or whatever it might be, recording short messages, putting them all together. There's your video. It's very simple. It costs you little to nothing. Yeah. But it can be put out and it can really emphasize your message and how you get it across. Yeah. You also, and I guess that, that leads into, doesn't it, being creative. You know, you want your appeal to stand out from the crowd. There's going to be a lot of competition out there at Christmas time. Lots of charities, both nationally and regionally, are doing Christmas appeals. Why is yours going to be different and better? We've talked before, and we'll reinforce it. Your messaging and your imagery has to inspire people. It, it could literally be what grabs somebody's attention in the first five seconds. If it's your image, if it's your message, they're going to your website. If it's not, they're going to go to somebody else's. And part of that is the name. You know, a long-winded, and again, go back to the one we didn't like, you know, give a gift of a toy at Christmas time appeal. It's not particularly catchy. 
think of something that absolutely resonates and will resonate both with your own organization but also with your target audience one or two words snappy sharp you can put it on the bottom you know our 2020 christmas appeal or 2020 season appeal whatever it might be but make the name catchy and appealing just like the messages and just like the imagery all of that remembering why people give more at christmas time you know you're tugging on the heartstrings you're tapping into their desire to, to to be generous at christmas so don't be schmaltzy be quite direct be quite confirm and by the same token don't be too christmassy even if you've got a christmas theme so what do we mean by that don't go overboard with the christmas imagery use it appropriately it might be a red nose on one of your doctors if you're a hospital or it might be a christmas hat on a couple of kids who are enjoying stuff it makes sure that people are aware it's christmas and it's the seat the festive season but it's not too yeah overtly christmasy too much tinsel does not work um, you know and we all get i think a bit nauseated with that coming you know in that final run um so i yeah i think you need to signal it's christmas and encourage that response but equally just show some moderation in how that's presented yeah absolutely so, five tips for a successful Christmas appeal. Of course, there would be five. Um, right, you really need to focus on, on your charity's mission. Tie the appeal back to your core mission. Uh, make sure it, it, it has got a direct relevance to that. Keep your messaging simple and make the whole engagement as social as possible. Um, ask for what you really want. You know, imagine you are, as a charity, writing your letter to Father Christmas this year. Say what you want. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you should really put it out there. Uh, and, and you may be pleasantly surprised. And just remember, think about the people that you're appealing to in, in, in the sense that imagine you are talking with them face to face and, and they are receiving this message around their kitchen table or in their home. So, so that you keep it really personal. So first person language, not third person language. Um, short, simple sentences. Uh, avoid long words or, or large, you know, challenging people's vocabulary. Um, and, and you'll get a much better response. Um, so they're really, really important tips when you're designing your Christmas peel this year. So that's our thoughts on how you plan your christmas appeal the key elements of it do we have any questions uh, andrew we have one here that says uh, i'm from bradford we have a multicultural community uh, is christmas the right message to be communicating to our supporters when actually our supporters come from all faiths and all communities oh so true and and the great thing is i think uh that of all the religious ceremonies christmas is about the most secular one you could possibly imagine um in the sense there's also diwali there are opportunities at this time of year uh for all faiths to be coming together to celebrate the values of family life and community life and so on so whilst we talk about a christmas appeal it is really a community appeal that is focused around this christmas holiday season um, and, and so it's for you to decide in your own charity just how religious a focus you want to bring to it. But as you can recognize in what I'm saying, there are many people from different faiths who celebrate Christmas, even uh, if, 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 regardless of whether they're Christians or not. Um, and there is, I think, great opportunity to demonstrate that in Bradford uh, in the messaging and imagery that you use for your appeal. Um, and uh, and I would show the full diversity of what of what it means to come together at Christmas as a community uh, in Bradford or elsewhere across the country. It's not about faith. It's it's not about um, ethnicity. Uh, um, it is all about celebrating our diversity um, and and our community. And that's the core message of a Christmas appeal. Absolutely, it is. You know, it is the season of goodwill, isn't it? It doesn't matter, irrespective of what religion you follow what creed what ethnicity background it is about being friendly and a part of a community and it's a great opportunity for a community to come together okay um, if there aren't any more questions uh, we're going to love you and leave you just a little punt if any of you haven't yet got a copy of our book gifted fundraising uh, please do get in touch with julie you've got her email address and she'll be happy to send you a complimentary copy you might find it useful um, but if there are no more questions, click on to the next slide, Chris. There's some contact details there, I think. Um, so 
Absolutely, there we are. So, reach out to either me or Chris, there's our email details. And there's Julie's email if you'd like a complimentary copy of Gifted Fundraising. Um, please do. That could be under your Christmas tree this year. Who knows? Um, um, but it's been great, Chris. Thanks for inviting me to join you today. I've, I've enjoyed, I can't believe Christmas is only a few weeks away. It feels very strange, doesn't it? Planning Christmas when the sun is shining. But look, thank you ever so much to everybody that's attended today. Um, if it's your first gifted webinar, welcome and we hope you've enjoyed it. If it's your second, third, fourth or fifth of the lockdown period, we hope they've been of great interest to you. Do please get in touch if you need us. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the summer and very importantly, eventually have a great Christmas. Yeah. All the best.